All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mengs, and it's time to take a deeper look at the current Advanced Wars leaks being posted so far. Yesterday, I uploaded a bunch of raw clips to my channel because I was worried the leaks might be deleted from Twitter, and I just wanted to compile everything neatly in one playlist. You can check it out by clicking the link in the video description below. These leaks were posted by a Twitter user named at Kilotheth, though I am just going to refer to her by her username Rashael. At first, Rashael only posted a single 30 second clip and a few screenshots, and then there was almost a radio silence from her for the next 6 to 7 hours. She then posted an update saying she had received an email from Nintendo telling her that the game was funded. A lot of people on Twitter accused Rashael of being a fake leaker, saying that if she had access to the game, why would she only post a few clips and then blatantly ignore the hundreds of messages she got telling her not to connect her Switch to the internet? And I must admit, I thought she was a fake myself. The next day, however, Rashael proceeded to post several 30 second clips from the game, showing without a doubt that if she's not the one having access to the game, she's certainly being sent clips by someone. She clarified the next day on her blog that the reason why she was on the fence about posting the clips was because she was fearing legal action from Nintendo. And this honestly makes a lot of sense. You have to keep in mind that this is a person with a very small Twitter account that only has a few hundred followers, and she was suddenly thrust into a unique role of being the only person in the world world so far with access to a delayed game that doesn't even have a release date yet. For that reason alone, I think we should all just leave the poor girl alone and let her post clips at her own pace. She actually seems pretty genuinely in shock, and this was clearly not something she expected to happen. Some people are saying she's taking advantage of the attention by plugging her social media links, but let's be real here. If you were in her position, you would probably do the same. Anyway, in this video I'm going to be analyzing the clips and the screenshots she posted, because there's a lot of interesting information to unpack here. The first thing I want to do is take a look at this first clip she posted, a 30 second video from the game's tutorial. This clip is weird for a number of reasons. First of all, there's no commanders being shown in the battle screen here, it's just empty. Additionally, the blue moon tanks actually look like the orange star ones. This made a lot of people speculate that the game Rashael got her hands on is actually an early alpha version of the game, and thus not the complete version. We did get to hear Olaf's theme song uninterrupted for a while though. Rochelle later posted this screenshot of the campaign menu. This is interesting because it shows the campaign being called Casual Campaign. This supports my theory that there might be three difficulty modes, as the original campaign in Advance Wars 1 wasn't called anything, it was just a normal campaign, and then you had the Advanced Campaign later on. According to my uncle at Nintendo, there will be a hidden Master Mode being unlocked if you beat the game, and this is apparently going to be harder than even the original Advanced Campaign, which sounds absolutely ludicrous. Later the same evening, Rashael posted this clip of Nell activating her power, Lucky Star, something she never does in the tutorial in the original game, so this is already quite a big deviation. If we pause the screen for a brief moment, we can actually read Lucky Star's tooltip. It is listed as randomly allowing Nell's troops to strike with up to 60% firepower, and also giving her troops 10% firepower and 10% defense. This is exactly how Nell's power works in Advanced Wars 1, supporting my theory that this is going to be a very faithful remake. However, the big question I have is whether the luck mechanic will work the same way in the reboot. If you don't know, luck is an extremely convoluted mechanic that is never properly explained to the player in the original Advanced Wars game. I made a 10 minute long video explaining how it works in case you want to check it out. There is actually some evidence later on that they might be changing up some of the core mechanics in the reboot, and thus there is a small chance that the luck mechanic might work differently as well. At the end of the clip, we also hear a bit of Nell's new power theme. Every commander in the game will have a unique theme that plays after their power activates. Whether or not this theme will be even more different during superpowers, we do not yet know. <laughs> The next day, Rachel posted this clip of the mission Gunfighter, where Andy faces off against the Grits. We get to hear a bit of Grits' partial voice acting, Possum spit. as well as a simple engagement between tanks and artillery, and also quite a bit of Grits' CO theme. Not much to say about this clip, really. So far, this is very faithful to the original. Even the enemy placement in this chapter is completely identical. 
Not long after, Rachel posted this clip of Max using his CO power Max Force. And this clip reveals something very interesting, as we get to read the tooltip of his power. We can actually see that Max Force gives all of his non-foot soldier direct combat units plus 35% firepower, as well as plus one movement, including transport units. This is very similar to how Max Force works in the original Advanced Wars. We know for a fact that Advanced Wars 1 Max in the reboot will retain his insane 50% day-to-day firepower. So with a plus 35% increase, this means Max Force will boost his firepower by 85%. However, in Advanced Wars 1, Max Force actually boosted his firepower by 87%. This is because the passive CO boosts didn't just increase firepower by a flat 10%, it set universal damage done to 110%, meaning it stacked with firepower increases in a very strange way. I made an entire video explaining the intricate mechanics of CO powers in case you want a more in-depth explanation. However, to simplify things, it seems like the reboot camp will just give the modifier a flat 10% increase. This means that Max has actually been nerfed by a grand total of 2%. They did it everyone, they nerfed Advanced Wars 1 Max, literally unplayable. Also, on a side note, I'm not a huge fan of Eager Raptor's voice acting in this clip. Roll tanks roll! I just don't really think he puts his heart into the line, and I'm seeing a lot of people say the same thing. Max Force's sound effects though, sound freaking amazing. This clip is by far the most interesting to me because it shows that they are willing to change up core mechanics in the first game. This tells me that they might also change other hidden mechanics, such as the aforementioned luck roll, but also things like how a Sturm's meteor strike is calculated. This opens up for a lot of possibilities for small changes that can have big impacts on certain COs. The last clip Rachel posted at the time of making this video is a brief tour of Hachi's shop. And here we see a lot of changes being done. First of all, there are new maps available here, including some from Days of Ruin, like Mint Plateau and Moon Island. This is very interesting, as it means the base game will come with a lot of extra maps. It also seems like instead of just buying the sound room, we will have to pay for each individual track. And we can also buy artwork for the various COs. I have to wonder if this will just include their in-game art, or if we will actually get some bonus artwork thrown in for the price. I certainly hope the latter is true. Also, I have to add once again, Hachi does not sound good in this clip. His voice does not fit him at all. Welcome! <laughs> Come buy something! Speaking of maps, there is another leak, although Rachel only tweets about this. She doesn't show it in-game with the screenshot, and that is regarding map size. According to Rachel, we can make maps up to a total size of 30 times 20 which is as much as the original game. But if the map is beyond 30 times 10 or 20 times 15, the map can no longer be shared online. This is pretty pathetic, as it means we can only make very small maps for online play. And I honestly cannot imagine why this limit is even in place. Are you really telling me that the modern servers cannot handle the sharing of regular sized maps? I mean, what the hell? I mean, it's 2022, Jesus Christ, Nintendo. Anyway, this is really bad if true, and I certainly hope they're gonna fix this with a patch. Anyway, to give some closing thoughts on these leaks, they do tell me a lot. First and foremost, this will be a very faithful remake. If they are not willing to balance Advanced Wars 1 Max, they are not going to balance other CEOs like Colin and Kambai either. With the CEOs being pretty much as unbalanced as they were in the original game, the competitive scene will be a complete mess. I doubt they will do things like ladders or CO bands or anything like that. If there's going to be a competitive Advanced Wars reboot camp scene, we will have to make it ourselves. They will not do it for us. If there is such a thing as randomly generated quick matches, I will expect to run into a lot of max players, and swapping over to Advanced Wars 2 rules will not help much here either. While max may be nerfed in that format, you will just run into CEOs like Kombai and Colin all the time. And I will have to wonder if CEOs like Hachi will be available for quick matches once you unlock him, because if that's the case, then yeah, you can expect no balance here. On the more interesting side, the reboot camp might change up some of the core mechanics like how power is generated, and that is definitely something we need to be on the lookout for. If they change the way luck is calculated, for example, Nell can either become much stronger or far weaker. These are all details I'm very much interested in knowing more about, especially once I start making my detailed CO guides. 
Overall though, I will say I don't think these leaks have been amazing for the hype of the game. The graphics are still not great to look at, and while I will say that the sound effects and music are absolutely stellar, a lot of people are not big fans of the goofy, cartoony artwork for the CEOs. So we'll see how much this ends up affecting sales. I'm still very excited for the reboot camp, but I don't think these leaks have done much to alleviate the fears I had to begin with. Also, how long do we have to wait until someone leaks artwork of Big Titty Goth GF Lash? Seriously, the people need to know. Anyway, at the time of making this video, there has been no further leaks posted, though Rachel is saying there is more yet to come, so we have something to look forward to. I'm going on a vacation now though, and I will be gone for a few days, so if something is shared, I won't be around to make a video on it right away. Anyway, let me know what you thought about these leaks in the comment section below. Are you more or less hyped for the reboot camp after seeing this? Let me know your opinions, and also if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more Advanced Wars news. My name is Hemengs, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.